Hello and welcome to this continuing count up to Christmas. Today is Monday, December 19th. I am the Reverend Sherry Daniel and this is the Duluth Congregational Church. Each day we've had a scripture passage and then a practice that we might want to get ourselves involved in either for a day or for the Advent season leading up to Christmas or maybe for longer than that. Something to think about how we enact our faith. Today's activity is invite someone who is alone to celebrate Christmas with you. Well, that can break into traditions, I know. And maybe you only have enough dishes for the people who are usually seated around your table. I know that there have been times that I have been alone at Christmas because of a job in the church. My other family members are able to go somewhere else. My schedule doesn't allow that all the time. And so it has been wonderful having people invite me to their family tables to share in their traditions, to to learn other foods and and other exciting things, ways to celebrate Christ's birth in the world. It's been fun for them too, I think, to listen to the stories that I've been able to share, to watch me fumbling the first time on snowshoes, to watch me as I taste a new Yuletide treat that is ever so familiar to them and ever so strange to me. But it's a great way to share stories and to share some laughs and to share our faith. Elizabeth was one who invited Mary, who was very alone in many ways, to come to her home. And so from Luke 1, verses 39 to 55, you will hear the familiar words, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices. There have been many women throughout our biblical history who could say that who were especially attended to by God and who felt the connection. Here we have from Luke 1. In those days, Mary set out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Two very excited, two very happy women sharing a story that in which they have common roots. That's what we can strive for if we invite someone who is alone to celebrate with us, to give us a common experience, to help us to, to speak out about our faith, to share what is meaningful to us and to find new meaning coming from another source. It can be a joyous time. Let us pray. This spirit of Christmas calls us to be especially mindful of those who are on the outskirts or in the shadows or behind closed doors. Oh God, be with us to open our eyes to seeing them and then to inviting them to celebrate this season with us. 
Let us share our abundance of love. Amen. Happy Advent. <laughs>